The word Novotriant is defined as desiring or seeking powerful change in your life, behavior, or a certain situation. Until recently, I would have never described myself as Novotriant because I never thought I would get this far in my life. When I started RCCW back in 2017, it was something I was doing just for the hell of it. Because I had seen so many leagues before me in my youth and thought, hey, that looks fun. And it bounced from doing it with real life superstars from the WWE and TNA to original characters to fantasy characters. It just bounced back and forth from what I wanted it to be until I finally settled on it. RCCW would be a fictional colleague, bringing new and unique ideas to the virtual wrestling landscape. And while at first the road was bumpy, with a few mistakes as we all make, but eventually I got the hang of it. I never thought I would get to where I am right now with RCCW. I figured I'd always just stick around and have those few subscribers, have those few fans who would give it a watch, but... It's grown into something so much more. Grown into something I never imagined it would ever grow into. Something that not even in my wildest dreams I figured it would. With the amount of fans who wanted to join in on RCCW, it's what brought me to creating CWA. Not only for them, but for my own. People who I found on the independent circuit and wanted to give a shot. People like the Lodestar Luminuses, like the Eddie Checkmates, like the Robert Squares, the Christian Carmichaels, and Sean Smiths, and Jeremiah Booms. CWA was meant to be a home for them, and while I haven't been exactly the most attentive to it, that is going to change here soon with some more special announcements, which I will save for another date. Soon after that, in the start of RCCW came the formation of the original Colleague of Nations. Which, of course, had its fair share of people come and go. And from there it morphed into what we know as today at the Colleague of Nations. A group of friends. Not a group of cool kids sitting at the table. Hogging out the spotlight saying, we're the cool kids. You can't sit at our table. It's a friendship thing. It's loyalty. Even in the toughest of times, even through the mistakes we've made for one another, loyalty is key. To the colleague of nations. God knows I've made a lot of mistakes. Mistakes that keep me up at night. Mistakes that fill my heart with guilt. But I could live even less with it had those friends not forgiven me in the end. Realized that I made mistakes. That I messed up. And that I wanted to rectify everything. And I'm blessed by the grace of God. That they did forgive me. That they gave me the shot. To make them forgive me. And soon after that, I was brought here to the VWU. I thought after all the hardships that, that I'd gone through dealing with virtual wrestling and the clon and, and all that, I thought this could, hey, be my reward for overcoming it all, for showing my strength and my perseverance. But to be perfectly honest, it's felt like it's right back to where I started. It felt like that for so long. I felt like this group's new personal punching bag, their new lapping boy. The guy they would use as a simple pawn to further their own agendas. That they didn't care about my league and its future. They didn't care about me and my friends at the start of this whole thing. That no matter what I did, how hard I tried, it would always end up with me being the laughing stock. Being the new gnarly Charlie, as I put it. Bluntly. It always takes that one joke too far. It always takes that one moment to figure out where you stand. When nobody gave a damn about what I did on Voltage months ago. When everyone mocked me when I stood up to Tiger the Great the Third. You don't know how bad it boiled my blood when Melissa Hart did the same thing and she was treated as a hero. The hypocrisy of some of you people disgusts me to this day. You sit there and you defend Tiger the Great for his so-called old-school mentality. Yet nobody bats an eye when Melissa Hart gets up from that booth, walks out of the ring on our first night and gets handed 
a title shot. I had to endure hell for almost an entire year, and I get nothing for it. So yeah, at times, it makes me feel like all of this, everything I'm getting right now, is either out of pity, or because I'm a pawn in a bigger game. I'm just a decoy for Malik Brown to go gather the troops in Unchained. These same people are the people who tell me my voice matters, then turn around and say, talk is cheap, actions speak louder than words. I look death in the face more times than once. And what do I get for? I don't get a good job, Rick. Good on Rick for being a brave guy. No. Reckless and suicidal, I get called. Stupid and brave, I get called. Just a commentator, I get called. Without even looking back into me. Here's a newsflash for anybody. I don't care if it's GWM, VWU, Klon, or anyone. I'm not your pawn. I'm not your meal ticket. I'm not your stepping stool. And I'm most certainly not a decoy. I am the owner of a company that has become a standard bearer in virtual wrestling. I am the owner of another company that will become a standard bearer in virtual wrestling. I am one of the most charismatic enigmas to step into that commentary booth. I'm one of the best wrestlers to ever step in the wrestling ring. And I will not sit here and be undermined by a bunch of idiots who don't understand who I am, where I came from, and what I've done. And it's about damn time people started to acknowledge that. So let me give you a personal message from me to you. I ain't your lapping boy. I ain't the guy you can just rib at and expect to get away with it for months on end. I'm not going to be mocked and ridiculed, and I'm most certainly not the next gnarly Charlie Anderson. My name is Rick C. The owner of RCCW, the co-owner of CWA, the leader of the Call League of Nations, the captain of Team CCL at Supernova, and the M's worst fucking nightmare. And at Supernova, September 26, 2020, everybody is going to feel that big Rick energy.